In this video, I'm going to teach you everything you need to know about pivot tables, including how to make them interactive and automated. And I'm going to do it on your coffee break, so stay tuned. Here I have the passing data poll from the NFL's website from the past decade, or from 2010 through week 16 of 2019. As you can see, that's over 950 rows of data. And if anyone is wondering, I did put a link to where the data came from in the description below. I've also added a few data points myself. As I'm going through these examples, you'll need to use your imagination to imagine what data you would be using with your workplace or at home. So let's get going here and look at the massive data set. Here's the categories I have that I think are worth calling out. The player's name, the respective year of the statistics, the team the player was with that given year, their passing stats, and their passer rating. I also included the conference and the division they were playing with during the respective year of the data. There's so much data here it would take ages to sort through it the old-fashioned way. And even beyond that, it would be difficult to tell a good accurate story with this data if I was fielding spontaneous questions in a meeting, because I wouldn't be able to sift through it fast enough. I need to clean it up so I can tell this data's story easily and efficiently. So let's dig in and learn how to work smarter instead of harder. The first step is to decide what data I want to include in the pivot table. The easiest way to do that is to turn the data itself into a table that has headers. To do that, I'm going to highlight column A through V. From the ribbon on the Home tab, I will then select Format as Table. From there, I'll pick the style I want with headers. It doesn't really matter what style you choose. I'll get a pop-up that will already have columns A through V selected as the data being added to the table. I'm going to ensure the My Table Has Headers option is checked and then click OK. My table is now created and it has automatically brought me to the ribbon on the Design tab. This is where I can name my table in the upper left hand corner. I'm going to name this one Passing. Now I am ready to create my pivot table and start telling my story. From the ribbon on the Insert tab, click Pivot Table. From there, I get a pop-up. You can see that because I selected a cell, any cell will work within the passing table. Excel is smart enough to know that the data from the passing table is the data that I want to use to create my pivot table. I also want to put the pivot table on a new worksheet, which is the default option, by the way. So I'm OK with everything in this pop-up. That means I can simply just click OK. You'll notice that Excel created a new page and added the blank pivot table. On the right hand side of my screen, you'll see pivot table options come up. I'm ready to start building my pivot table now. Next, let's learn about the different areas of a pivot table. First, let's learn about the values area. Let's say I want to calculate the total amount of passing touchdowns. I simply drag touchdowns into the value area, and you can see that since 2010, there has been 7,767 touchdowns thrown. I have a couple options here. Let's say I also want to know how many total passing attempts and completions there have been since 2010. I'll just drag them into the values area as well. Actually, you know what? I changed my mind. I don't want to include touchdowns yet. I'd rather just include attempts, completions, and completions percentage. I can drag to remove touchdowns as an option and add percentage as an option instead. There is a problem here now though. Is showing the total completion percentage, not the average completion percentage. So if I right click on that cell and then select value field settings, this will open up some options for me. This is where I can choose things like count, max, min, or average. For this example, I want average. Next, let's learn about rows. This is where I can add specific items I want to learn about. For example, if my goal is to know these passing statistics for each specific player, I could add player to the rows area from the field. If I want to know these statistics per player broken down by year, that's where the column area comes into play. If I drag year into the columns area, you can see it broken down by year. But for my example moving forward, I just want to look at total statistics for each player and remove the year from the columns. There's a better way to do that, which I'll show you in a little bit. I'm also going to add a few other pieces of data to the value area as well. I want to know how many touchdowns each player has, how many interceptions they have, and what their passer rating is. I also don't want the total passer rating, I just want the average. So I need to change that in the value field settings. Also, that's way too many decimals for my OCD, so I'm going to go back into the value field settings and change the number format to only show two decimal points.
For the purpose of my story I'm trying to tell, I really want to focus on passer rating. So I'm going to move that information to the front of the pivot table by dragging it to the top. You can see that when I drag it to the top, it will move the information from the last column in the pivot table to the first column in the pivot table. Next, I want to sort the data so it shows the player with the best passer rating on top and those with the lower passer rating on the bottom. To do that, I'm going to right click on the value column, hover over sort, and choose largest to smallest. By now, I'm sure you are seeing the problem, just like I am. It's hard to tell a story when you have players who only have one pass attempt in the last 10 years. Those players are skewing the information and make it really hard to tell a story. I want to get rid of some of that information. There's a couple of ways to do this. The first choice is to use the filter option. This passing data is from anyone who has thrown a pass since 2010. That includes quarterbacks and running backs and wide receivers. I want to get rid of running backs and wide receivers. The easiest way to do this is by dragging the position field to the sort area. At the top of my pivot table, you'll see a sort dropdown. Just click on the arrow, scroll down, and select quarterback as the option. That removed running backs and wide receivers. The problem is that there are still quite a few players at the top who only have a few pass attempts. We want to exclude those from our data because that too makes it difficult to tell an accurate story. Excel offers a cool feature to take care of this issue. If I click on the drop down arrow and hover over the values filter, this is going to give me a bunch of options to filter further. For example, I just want to look at players who have over 3,000 passing attempts since 2010. I can do that by clicking on greater than or equal to choose pass attempts as the criteria from the dropdown and then type 3000 in the blank. Now the pivot table only includes players that have over 3000 pass attempts since 2010. You can also look at it from a different lens. We can break this data down further yet and make the data interactive. Here's an example of how we can break this data down by year but still keep the data looking clean. For instance, if I just add the year to the column area, it gets pretty messy when looking at multiple value sets at once. There's a better way of doing this. Excel offers a really cool tool called Slicers. For this example, I want to break this data down and look at different years separately within the data. I can do this by right clicking on year in the fields list and selecting Add Slicer. Now I can choose one year by clicking on each year, or I can look at multiple years by dragging or holding down the control key and selecting multiple years. There is still a problem though, no data is showing. Well that's because no player has ever thrown 3000 pass attempts in one year, which is probably a good thing. So I need to adjust that in our value filter settings that I showed you earlier. I'm going to change that to 300 instead of 3000. Now as I play around with the different years, you can see the number and players change. For example, in 2010, Tom Brady had the top passer rating, but in 2019, Drew Brees had the top passer rating. I can break this down even further by adding a slicer to the conference field option. Now I'm only looking at the top passer ratings in 2019 for players in the NFC that have over 300 passing attempts. I can break it down even further by adding a slicer for division. Now I'm only looking at the top passer ratings in 2019 for players in the NFC North division that have over 300 passing attempts. You can also go back and play with the other slicers. As you can see, pivot tables, when used properly and efficiently, can be a powerful storytelling tool when looking at tons of rows of data, or even just a few rows of data. Like I said, You'll have to use your imagination when thinking how these features would work with your data sets. My guess is that this should allow you to work smarter and not harder. I do have one last thing I want to show you about pivot tables though before I go. If I right click anywhere within the pivot table and click on pivot table options, this will give me a separate window that allows me to change preferences within my pivot table. There are a few things that I think are worth calling out in here to make your life a little easier moving forward. I can name my pivot table here if I would like. On the Layout and Format tab, I can choose to have my headers centered. I can also choose to have the rows auto-fit my data. Basically, this means that if you have a six-figure number in one of the columns, that column will be six characters wide automatically. If I unselect that option, I can still manually stretch the rows to the width that I want them to be. On the Tools and Filter tab, I can decide if I want grand totals in the rows or columns. If I uncheck this option, the totals won't show anymore. In my opinion, there isn't really anything too important to call in the display or printing tab. But in the data tab, I usually check the box to refresh data when opening the file. This means that each time I open the spreadsheet, the pivot table will auto refresh. This is important if I'll be continuously adding data to my original table. If I don't select this option, I'll need to manually refresh the pivot table each time I add new data.
If you haven't already, make sure you click that subscribe button, click the bell notification, let me know you like the video, and if you learned something from this video, let me know that in the comment section below.